Hey everybody, I want to uh, welcome back, welcome you back to my page and also welcome you back to our kitchen. Um, so today I'm making black beans from scratch. These are for a coworker, uh, Linda. She's always been exceptionally kind to me and our family every time we've gone through. And anytime we've gone through with groceries, she first started asking, you know, do I cook? What do I cook? And then we just started talking about food. But she's always been nice and so I'm just gonna make her black beans it was actually I think the last thing that we talked about um, this recipe is also for one of our followers sons I had a follower reach out letting me know that you know her son suffers from anxiety and that you know it helped seeing that you know somebody else suffered as well you know somebody that looks like I do um, so this is for you too uh, I know you're anxious about the one-on-one -on -one cooking lessons. I am as well. I'm shaking in my boots right now just being on camera talking to nobody because this is a recording. Uh, and that still won't be edited out because that's not the point. Um, anyway, so I've already started prepping some of this. Um, I had to do a quick soak on the beans because I forgot to put them in the pot last night. I prefer doing an overnight soak or an all day soak. And then I like cooking them for a very long time. Had to do the quick soak, rinsed them. They are back in a dry pot. The other pot is what I'm going to saute all the vegetables in after they're prepped, but before I add the beans. Because I'm gonna saute all the vegetables, then add the beans, and immediately after I add the beans, I'm adding the vegetable stock, which I started this morning out of all the kitchen scraps. All right, so right now I've got some of the yellow bell pepper cut up. The rest of it is currently in there. All right, so other than black beans, um, I did want this stream or episode or whatever the hell you want to call it to be about anxiety. Because, hey, you know, I'm still new behind the camera and it still makes me nervous. And uh, since I'm not self-medicating with alcohol and pills and all the other harder drugs and stuff, um, this, uh, it makes coping with anxiety difficult. Uh, my social anxiety has gotten much worse since I've... <laughs> started drinking and taking pills and so uh, we discovered that last night while uh, at my daughter's nutcracker uh, performance shit like that I'm walking up. there it is and see I forget where I put you too because I was distracted um anyway at the performance uh so I knew from previous performances that she's had that auditoriums and I do not get along. Auditoriums full of loud people and loud children and I definitely not get along. And auditoriums filled with all of the above and music that I find grating to my nerves is a nightmare. Uh, thought ahead, I brought you know, a notebook or a sketch pad and pens and pencils. I brought headphones, I had my phone, so I was able to stream music, and I still hid with my beanie down over my eyes and my jacket up around my shoulders and my head damn near tucked between my legs for almost two hours. Um, I had to pee before the intermission and refused to get up to go pee because I could not and did not want to try to pass through everybody and bump into anybody. So. I stayed in my seat until after the intermission and after Lilith did her performance and I tried to stick it out and we got to like the last 10 minutes or so and I couldn't and so I climbed up over my seat up over the next three aisles to the back and then down the stairs to go find a bathroom which was then locked and then I had to run to the other side of the school that we were at to find a bathroom before almost finally peeing all over myself. I did not, thankfully. Um, however, I would like to point out that if you're going to have bathrooms open to the public to use, 
after hours, it would be nice to have the water turned on so that people can wash their hands. That was a little disappointing, guys. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, there was that. Um, it was the first time I had been in such a social situation uh, without being completely loaded uh, and or having something on me that I could take during that time. All right, so I just mindlessly chopped up my red bell pepper while talking to you guys. Uh, just kind of did that on autopilot. I'm not paying attention. I don't know if you can see it or not. So uh, if not, I apologize. I will make an effort in the future to be sure that I can you know, get a camera angle where you can see how I'm cutting everything out. Um, so I am doing the black beans from scratch. It is a pound of black beans. Um, I, I'm doing these vegan. So like no butter, no animal products at all. It's all vegetables, vegetable broth, water, and spices. Um, I'm using a yellow and a red bell pepper, two stalks of celery, which I've cut in half and I'm now slicing up and I'm using two whole sweet onions and then a bowl full of carrots. Uh, I might not actually use the entire bowl of carrots because I get tired of cutting them up into matchsticks and then mincing them up into even smaller pieces and smaller pieces because I really don't like big chunks of carrot and stuff. Unless it's like chicken noodle soup or oh, clam chowder. All right, yeah, you can tell it's getting cold out. I'm thinking about soup. Um, anyway, carrots also take a lot longer to saute the larger they are. They do add sweetness, but they can take longer to cook. And so if you don't really want crunchy vegetables or vegetables you have to chew on, you need to make sure that you cook them longer than you'd have to cook your onions or your peppers or your garlic or any of your less dense, more fibrous vegetables. Uh, that's still not probably right. And if you want to correct me, that's fine. I'm still learning too. Like this is mostly self-taught except for what has been passed down to me and I'm still learning and it's fun. Um, anyway, I'm gonna keep prepping because I'm getting off topic. Uh, the reason I'm using so many vegetables with only a pound of black beans is because some of this is going to cook down, but also because I really do not want to have to rely on salt for my flavoring. Um, I am sensitive to salt. I can tell when I've had too much, my fingers will swell up, my feet and ankles will swell up. Like I, I can't even like really drink the little liquid IV things because like I'll get edema in my feet and legs and it's horrendous and awful. So uh, yeah, I try to limit salt, which you know, not necessarily the greatest thing for you anyway, but it does make food taste so damn good. Like, and that's backed by science too, because that's backed by chemistry. What is it? What was that? What was the name of that documentary on uh, Netflix? Was it like salt, fat, salt, fat, acid, and heat. That's a good one. It really is. Yes, I like my cooking shows, um, all of them, and my travel shows that have food. I love food. Uh, all right, so I am rambling. Uh, it's because I am nervous. Yes, this is how I like to cut up my onions. Sorry if you don't like it. I realize that's loud. Um, also, the playlist in the background found it on Spotify by searching for royalty free and it popped up. And yes, it does have 194 hours and 30 minutes worth of music. It is not music that I was allowed to select. Uh, well, at least the songs and the artists were not ones I could select individually. So if anything is not to your liking, there's a chance it may not be to my liking either. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a moment, finish cutting this up because as I said, I'm just rambling. I will go ahead and start recording again once I start sauteing and I'm going to throw the beans in and I will continue to talk or ramble at that point. So I'm going to say stay tuned, but really this is just going to be a couple seconds for you guys. All right. Thank you. All right. So you're still sitting there. I'm the one that's back. 
I've cut up onions, celery, and carrots so far. I realized that we had tomato that really needed to be cooked, and I have nothing else that's going to use tomato in the next couple days. So I'm going to put the tomato in with the uh, rest of the vegetables that are going with the black beans. I'm also going to go ahead and seed jalapenos. I'm going to leave one jalapeno with seeds in it, and then I'm going to seed one or two more so we can get the flavor, but less of the heat. Because I like a lot of heat, most people don't. You know, I'm one of those, like, if I'm not sweating, it's not hot enough type people. You know, I, I, I want to sweat. I don't necessarily want it so hot that, like, I'm drooling out of my mouth and on the verge of vomiting. But I have done that before. It is not fun. Uh, I mean, it's not my thing. It might be fun for you. Who am I to judge? Um, all right. I do have my jalapeno on a separate cutting board instead of my wooden cutting board. The reason being is I do not want the cross-contamination from the capsaicin on anything else I might put on this cutting board. That and my current wooden cutting board does not have a good seal on the wood. I actually need to get more oil to go ahead and seal it a second time so that I can prevent any damage and anything seeping in. I will also be using the jalapeno cutting board for the tomatoes because they are messy and I really don't like getting all the citric acid on the wood. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick and then I will pause the recording again and well actually I'll do that real quick throw everything in and start sauteing pause the video and then start recording when uh, I start seizing it after everything's sauteed all right so yes I'm putting on gloves for two reasons one I work with my hands at work a lot and I have I work with cardboard my hands are dry and they're cracked jalapenos have capsaicin Capsaicin is what makes them hot. Capsaicin is what's in mace that makes your eyes burn. Now, I'm doing this one, so I don't get it in this, where my skin's split right here, where it's cracked, and so it doesn't burn like crazy. Two, so I don't have to continue to wash my hands over and over and over and over, hoping I get all of the capsaicin off, so that when I take my contacts out, I don't burn my eyes. Or when I go to the bathroom, I don't burn myself. Or don't burn my wife. So, people, if you're handling hot peppers, gloves are easiest. All right, anyway. So, let's see. All right, so this one is the largest one, and this is the one I think I want to leave all the peppers in. Yes, so this will be the one that's got all the peppers or all the seeds, rather. Sorry, nervous, stumble over words, use wrong words, it happens. That's a thing, so it's singing to myself. Anyway, um, all right, so the seeds from this one, this will provide the, the heat for the black beans. And I will put them in you know, with the rest of the vegetables so that the seeds are in there longer. It will provide more heat the longer it's in there. Um, yeah. All right. I just said you know, and I don't know what the, in the world I was going to say after it. So ignore that, please. And yes, that is a bowl right there. That bowl is for the scraps to continue to feed more vegetable stock. This one though is gonna have peppers and stuff so I have a batch of spicy vegetable stock. Also, I said that I probably wouldn't use all the carrots. Yeah, I didn't. I used maybe a third of them. All right, yeah, no, skip. All right, so, next one. Now this one, we are gonna go ahead and seed. Now, knife safety is you do not cut towards yourself. Yes, I realize I am cutting towards myself. I am willing to accept the fact that if after 30 years of handling knives, if I cut myself, that is my fault. And if I cut myself with a blade that has gone through a spicy pepper, it is going to burn. So I know to be careful. 
I'm using a sharp paring knife to make sure that I'm able to cut through it easily. You do not want to use a dull knife for any precision work. It does not turn out well. Whether you are trimming fat off of meat or you are cutting seeds out of a jalapeno or a habanero, do not use a dull knife. Keep your knives sharp. If you don't have a good whetstone and don't know how to use a whetstone, my favorite video for how to use a whetstone is actually on like the live action Way of the House Husband on uh, Netflix. It's not called Way of the House Husband, it's called like Ingenuities of the House Husband or something like that. I can't, I can't remember, but he shows how to use whetstones that are set up in a sink. I prefer this because it's quick and easy and it's adjustable. Um, I will demonstrate how to use that at a later date on a later video so that it's not so long. All right, so I've seeded two halves so far. All right, now some of our kitchen scraps, yes, we will use for vegetable stock, especially when we remember to. Um, sometimes I don't have enough vegetables to uh, fill the bulk of the stock with the stuff that I like to use. You know, I don't have, I, won't, I might not have enough uh, fragrant or root vegetables. Like I might not have enough uh, celery or enough onion in it, or I might not have enough carrots or bell pepper. You know, and I'm, I've been cooking a lot of squash recently, and I really, 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 really don't want a vegetable stock made out of, you know, burnt butternut husks and burnt acorn squash husks and opo squash left over. Like, no, it's just that that to me feels like that stock would turn out like a burnt leftover soup. And I may be wrong; it, it may be delicious. And who knows? Maybe later on, I'll decide to go ahead and try it out just to see. Uh, but. That's not going to be anytime soon. And yes, I do say try it out to see because a lot of my cooking is either trial and error. Actually, most of it's trial and error. There's a lot of stuff that I cook that I've never tried before or flavor combinations that I've never tried before. And then I will keep a couple you know, recipes or recipe ideas around for the future. So like I, I took a stuffed manicotti recipe off of a box and swapped up some ingredients. And what I'll do is every now and then is I'll change some of those ingredients. And I'll do that with almost anything. You know, chili, spaghetti, stuffed manicotti, which I haven't made in a decade, longer. Uh, but no, a lot, of, a lot of my food is change up. I, I don't normally make the same, well, hell, I don't really make anything the same way twice. If I do, it is very rare or it is something like pancakes where I use the same, you know, flavorings of like, or flavor add-ins like vanilla and some extra brown sugar and some cinnamon because, I mean, like, what can I say? I like cinnamon buns, like, I freaking love them, but I also love pancakes and so I can get my fix that way. That's what I need to do. I need to make a cinnamon bun pancake. Yum. Here I go rambling again. Um, all right, so I'm still seeding these. I will be done in just a moment. I'm talking more than actually trying to hurry up and get this done because while these are sauteing, before I season them, I also need to go ahead and start dinner for my own family. Uh, and my daughter is going to help me with that one. I don't think we are gonna do a stream on that. And Unless she just wants to. No, not tonight. No, not, okay, mommy says not tonight, so not tonight. All right, so we got one, two, three. You know what, we're gonna go ahead and stick with that because I don't wanna make it too hot for my coworker. Okay. Nope. 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 No. Nope. No. Nope. Yes, I'm sorry. Like I said 194 hours of music, but I'm still picky. 
There we'll see. Alright. Um, okay, so. Let's see. Anxiety. What else have we been anxious about recently? Or how has it manifested? I mean, other than the fact that. Okay, so like I'm, I have not been sleeping well just because of stress and anxiety and racing thoughts and being sober. It's fun. And it's really not because then you're a mess and you can't freaking regulate your emotions properly. So things that make you sad make you sad really quick and then jump something else and then jump something else. Well, that's been happening a lot. And the racing thoughts have been happening a lot. And case in point, last night I was explaining how this was affecting me to my wife and like started going into a panic attack about the possibility of a friend's dogs meeting our dogs and then our dogs either not liking the friend's dogs or one of the dogs jumping over the fence and teaching Cambria how to jump over the fence and like went into full blown like fast speech panic mode. It's not fun. I don't like it, uh, but it's something that I'm gonna have to learn to cope with. Now, granted, you know, at the start of this video, I was quite literally a shaking mess. My heart rate was up, I, my hands were shaking, and you know, over time of recording this and just you know, pausing, talking to my wife for a minute, ranting to her for a little bit, now back to this, like, it, it does feel more natural, but that's because this, this, like, this helps me. This helps me when my thoughts are racing, it helps me, you know, when I'm nervous about stuff, it helps me when I'm meeting new people, you know, and I do love to feed people. We absolutely love having people over, feeding them, having good conversation, just good company, you know. A lot of times we congregate around the kitchen because I can't cook anything fast. Um, I've said that before. I will continue to say it. You know, it's a pretty much a running joke that amongst some of our friends that like, you know, if we say that dinner's at six, like, no, dinner's not at six. Dinner will probably be at like nine. And that is, that is not wrong. <laughs> Jeez. Part of it's because yes, I do get distracted and you know, I'll start talking and you know, stop prepping or whatever. Part of it's because I just get caught up in the moment with everybody else. You know, I'm, I'm, I am happiest when I'm providing you know, food and joy to others. Like it, it, it warms me. <laughs> it, it, it warms my soul. It, it really does. I like feeding people. You know, and yet sometimes it doesn't necessarily turn out right. And I am the biggest and worst critic of my food. I can have a, you know, I can have a table of 20 people telling me, Oh, it's absolutely delicious. I'm like, nope, this is wrong with it, and this is wrong with it, and this and it needed more of this and less of this. It's, uh, I, I, re I recognize I need to do a better job of just saying thank you and meaning it sincerely rather than arguing with people who are giving me their opinion on something that I created and took the time and energy and many times hours to make. I just need to accept it. Yes fault um recognize this working on it uh all right tomato my all right so i do have olive oil in a heavy bottom stock pot and i do say heavy bottom because i mean it's that bastard is thick i actually sorry recognize it away from the camera i actually don't normally like using this stock pot unless i'm truly like slow cooking something or cooking something over a long period of time because that that pot stainless steel it's got thick upper and lower side but then the inside center core is copper which is awesome and it's supposed to be for like conductive tops and stuff like that it works great with it we have a glass top um it does work well with it but it's so thick it takes it a while to heat up it's the only reason i don't like it but that also means that it's not absolutely scorching stuff if I've accidentally wandered away for a moment and left it on low, medium, low. Uh, you know, it's a little bit thicker. I do like it. I wish the uh, handle to the lid, so like glass lids with stainless steel handles that don't have a rubber or a Teflon coating where the metal is connected to the glass with more metal. Yeah, 
That's a design flaw. For anybody out there that designs pot lids, do not put a metal handle on a glass lid without some kind of freaking coating. I should not need to get my oven mitt just to check to see how much my soup or my chili or whatever has reduced. Sorry, ranting again. <laughs> anyway, all right, so the peppers, onions, carrots, celery, and jalapenos all going into the pot. And yes, recognize this is a lot, but I want it to be flavorful. This will cook down a good bit. Probably not half, I'd say. It'll probably cook, about a third of it will probably cook down. I mean, cook down isn't really the right word. You know, it'll get softer and then the amount of airspace in between all the vegetables will decrease and all the vegetables will be just kind of laying on top of each other. Which I guess really is the definition of cook down. Shit. Anyway, um, pardon my language. All right, so. Mm, or not, I, I mean, I, I cuss, I, I do try to be extra mindful when I am like in public and I know who my audience is because I just try to be respectful to the people that I'm around. I don't want to be dropping F-bombs when I'm right next to a little old lady and a bunch of kids. That is not what I like to do. However, if I am in a foul freaking mood and they just happen to be there, I can't guarantee it. I mean, you know, we all lose our temper sometimes to varying degrees. I try not to be that person, especially in public or around people, because I mean, it's just, it's just disrespectful. It really is. Um, to me, it is anyway, it might not be to you and that's okay. I mean, you know, you live your life the way you want to live yours. I'm going to live my life the way I'm going to live mine. And as long as we're not hurting anybody, I don't see an issue with that. All right, so this, the vegetables, they're gonna saute for a little bit. Like I said, extra thick bottom. I just dumped a lot in there. I'm gonna pause this, make dinner for my family, and I'm gonna come back. When I come back, you'll still be just like five seconds older, and I will probably be like an hour, hour and a half-ish older. Uh, thank you guys, be back in a second. All right, so yet again, you're only a couple seconds older, and I'm like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, ignore this, this is our dinner-ish stuff. All right, so my vegetables have sauteed. They have cooked down, and they cooked down more than half. They had filled the pot up to here, now it's down to here, just the last couple inches. Um, the tomatoes I threw in there right after I threw in the uh, onion, celery, bell pepper, jalapenos, carrots, like all that. I've also seasoned it with salt, pepper, ancho chili powder, a little bit of garlic powder because I ran out of garlic. My garlic actually started sprouting from all of the bulbs. So that garlic went into the uh, vegetable stock. So I've got that done. What am I forgetting? Salt, pepper, garlic powder, chili powder, ancho chili powder, cumin. I like cumin a lot. It's normally not in uh, like Mexican food, I don't believe. It's in a lot of Indian food. They looked at us but we, 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 uh, we love it. Um, I like the flavor a lot. Oh, I've my earbud behind my beanie this whole time. Sorry for looking like a fool. Um, originally before I discovered the royalty free music, I was just going to have music playing through my earbuds tucked in behind my beanie so I wasn't screaming with earbuds in but I could still hear music um, all right so I'm about to add the black beans I'm gonna add well this is actually four cups of our homemade vegetable stock uh, I'll probably add a little bit more to that as I ladle it out because it does need to be strained to make sure that any of like the skins from the onion or any of the cabbage leaves that may have like broken up or any of the seeds or anything like that do not end up in the stock. Uh, so that'll be just a moment. Um, and actually, 
really everybody, uh, once I add that and fill it up enough, it's just going to simmer and it's going to keep simmering and I'm going to taste it. And if I think it's too salty, I will find a way to try to cut the salt out, which may actually end up even being having to divide it, you know, in two and adding another batch if it's way too salty. Um, you know, too spicy, find a way to tame it a little bit by adding just a little bit of sugar to help ease up the capsaicin. If I want it more savory, if I want it to be, have just, you know, a little more oomph to it or a little more zest, I can, you know, use ancho chili powder. You know, what I use is going to be to, you know, my tastes. I am trying to stick somewhat in like the Latin, Latin Caribbean flavor profile. Um, I would normally serve this on white rice with cilantro over the top of it, maybe a little bit of cheese, most likely some fresh and fresh squeezed lime juice and like minced fresh jalapeno that's been seeded. It's really, really good that way. It's also really good with just your favorite hot sauce on rice and or with cornbread or however you like to eat your black beans. Um, everybody, I really want to thank you for joining us today in our kitchen. I really appreciate you watching this video. And for those of you that follow, thank you very much. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, follow, and share. And everybody, I hope you all have a good holiday. Thank you.